Welcome to the Kawaii Guide for Phase 1 of the Omega Protocol, the newest ultimate introduced in Patch 6.3. Start off by stacking the party to the southeast. This starting point puts the party the same distance from the north and the west, which is important for the first mechanic. Once Omega casts Program Loop, each player will be marked with a number 1 to 4. Important to note that this debuff is only visible on your debuff and the party debuff list, and there is no other visual indicator. The only restriction on how these debuffs go up is that there will be two of each number. Two of these towers will spawn randomly around the map, which are slightly offset from the cardinals. It must be soaked by the two number 1 players. But before you leave the party stack, you need to wait for two things. First, if you're taking the clockwise or counterclockwise most tower. We solve this by having all of the DPS go clockwise in support, that is the tanks and healers go counterclockwise. Then, if two DPS or two support have the same number, have a priority of how you adjust. Set this up however your group is most comfortable, but we have tanks and melees adjust. On screen, you can see the priority of how adjusted works. Leftmost player of each group adjusts in the Second, you must wait for Blaster to start casting, as that cast has Omega target two random party members with an interceptable tether that causes the tethered player to get hit by a large AoE that reduces their max HP to 1% and applies a twice come ruin. Therefore, when everyone gets their numbers, the party has a brief few seconds to look at the party list and know if they need to adjust or not, while the two players marked with three move inside, so no matter who gets tethered, those players instantly intercept and pick up their tethers. The tethered players need to bait their AoEs into two cardinals without a tower, while the towers are soaked and those four players all pick up a twice come also, if someone else takes your tower, this other debuff falls off and you will get confused and you will die. Then the party will wipe, because you need that debuff to even interact with the towers. But now that the first towers and tethers have been resolved correctly, the number 2 players need to soak the next pair of towers that spawn. And the number 4 players need to grab a tether to take to a safe spot. There are two ways you can pick up tethers that both work, but the group needs to be on the same page. You can either have both people go to the center of the mega before going to their safe spot, or the person goes to grab the tether in their priority, i.e. DPS grabbing the most clockwise tower to support grabbing the most counterclockwise. The only exception to this priority is if the tethers go from north to east to south to west, the tethers can inverse priority to avoid needing to run 180 degrees. Now when these towers and tethers go off, the twice come ruin from the odd numbered players falls off, so they can resolve towers and tethers again safely. But since only the threes can interact with the towers, they need to find the proper one to soak while the ones grab tethers this time. Then finally, the twos take the tethers off the ones so that the fours can soak the last pair of towers. One final thing to note, each cardinal will only get two towers during this mechanic. It might seem like a lot but I find it easy to think of the mechanic as such. Odds do something, then evens, then odds, and then evens. And that you only do one thing each time. And while you're doing nothing, it is important to think ahead to the next step. Once this is safely resolved, Omega will cast Panto Raider. The party will all get marked with numbers the same way as me, and a prey. However, this time we do light party splits to force a healer in each party. Our adjust priority is tanks, melee, then ranged casters, but so long as healers are last in pile, they will never adjust. Omega will cut the arena in two by spewing flamethrowers in two random directions that are 180 degrees from each other. These conal AoEs will then rotate either clockwise or counter and keep on going that direction with no tell. We don't die to this by finding the initial two safe spots and standing in the center to wait to see which way they are spinning. We default to east and west groups, sliding into safe spots clockwise if necessary. Once we know the direction to move, each party runs forward to follow a flamethrower, except for the player with one, who lags behind, waiting for their number to fall off. Everyone is constantly also dropping ground AoEs with their feet, so precise movement is required to keep as much area safe as possible. 
When the one and the first prey expire, the party will get hit by a three-man line stack, and the solo player will get hit by a small personal AoE that will send anyone else hit flying into the wall killing them. Then the player hit by a missile will run through inside Omega's hitbox to regroup with the party while the two players run back outside his hitbox to bait their personal AoE. Repeat this movement until the entire light party has baited an AoE and resolved the prey. The last thing that happens in this phase is Omega will shoot large cone tank busters at the two targets furthest from him, while three of the other six members get marked with a line AoE. If the tanks stack up and invuln the gleams, there's enough room for the party to have static spread spots without any overlap. And once all six non-tanks beta beam and five tank gleams go up, Omega will cast his enrage. 